on today's video, a civil war breaks out on the ground of Lost Kingdom 1. Kingdom 101 goes into what looks like a civil war. It's not exactly what you think it is, but the allies of 93 and 331 go into a little scuffle. And in this video, we're going to talk about what happened, what I think about it, what are the implications of it on Lost Kingdom 1, and whether or not this is a very meaningful situation, or is it more blown out of proportions than it actually was. So sit back, drop a like on the video. Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming as madness broke in Lost Kingdom 1. One of the B teams, allies of 93 and 331, broke into what seemed like a civil war. Everybody was like, oh, civil war, Lost Kingdom 1 is doomed. 331 and 93 are gonna lose. But turns out, things are not exactly as they seem. Before we start though, I'm a sponsored content creator of Ours Kingdoms. If you enjoy the content, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, get a notification when we upload a new video. Stream tomorrow, Wednesday, 4 p.m. UTC, like always, maybe 4.15, I tend to be late because of work. Yeah, we do Rise of Kingdoms videos every single day. I appreciate all of you have been sticking around even though I've been a little bit late with the content. Work's been killing me, but thank you for chilling with us. Before the fighting, let's show you the contendants of this madness. We have ADOC, an 8.2 billion power alliance going up against WF. Uh, well, FW, sorry, I have to flip them. A 3.7 billion power lines. And now you're telling yourself, well, what on earth a 3.7 power, a billion power lines is doing fighting on 8.2 billion power lines? And you're not wrong. Uh, there, this went on for a little bit. I recorded some footage, but there was something else going on in the background. And as soon as I heard what happened here, I just stopped recording because it, it made no sense, right? So here is the story. The folks of ADOC had a guy, or well, that kingdom had a guy who is 100 million power. And this happened, guess when? Yep, during Mightiest Governor. And guess what caused this? Yep, someone broke Mightiest Governor rules. Again, our favorite reason to go civil warring out. But this was kind of weird because one guy breaking the rules doesn't mean a civil war has to break, right? Well, it turns out that when he, his alliance essentially backed him up and this 3.7 billion power alliance going up against an 8.2 billion power alliance is essentially an alliance trying to stop the big alliance from punishing the 100 million power player who broke the rules and did it during the time of Lost Kingdom happening and did it without even caring. And honestly, it's a, it's a really weird one, right? Because... A person breaking Mightiest Governor rules is nothing new. And we've seen it happen time and time again. And we've seen alliances fight each other because of one or two people who did this. But it's really crazy to me when you're in a KVK and you're in such an important KVK, the one everyone has their eye on, Lost Kingdom 1, 93 and 331, and the two B teams, one of them being 101, are going up against a, a, a stacked deck of 341 and 177, and there are two B teams, which we're gonna cover this KVK, by the way, to a very big extent on this channel. We'll be streaming some of their fights, we'll be making videos, we got reports, we are on the field in this KVK with 341. We have a, an, a Farmala account out there ready to record, so you don't wanna miss that content by subscribing to the channel so you know when that happens. But uh, an alliance that defends someone else who broke kingdom rules is is complicated. I'm sure that there is previous history which caused this to melting pot to finally melt, right? But even though that's happening, you're you're in a KVK where like people people are relying on you. You are in the center of attention and you choose to do that now. It's a little bit selfish and it also tells me a little bit about the health of that kingdom. So I want to tell you a story that'll explain to you what I mean by that. A kingdom that you all know, a kingdom that I follow very closely, and I'm not going to comment on who they are, had a very, very big alliance that leads them, and then had a few other alliances that were sub-alliances, and the second biggest alliance was about half of the size of the big alliance, right? A bit more than that. And it had some very, very strong, capable players. During one of these KBKs, I believe it was season three, 
there was a conflict of interest happening between these alliances where the big alliance essentially kind of didn't leave enough rewards, didn't leave enough territory for the secondary alliance to spread their wings a little bit, right? And so they felt a little um, disrespected. I was hit up and told, listen, there's a 50-50 chance we still war this out, right? Get ready to record. And I was like, cool. But then it didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen was that the secondary alliance realized that it doesn't matter how much they're getting screwed right now or how bad they think things are. The moment they start duking it out on the field in Lost Kingdom, everybody loses. Because at the end of the day, they're disrespecting their alliance mates, they're disrespecting their kingdom mates, they're disrespecting everything. And so they tabled the confrontation for after KBK. And because of that maturity that that secondary alliance had, they actually ended up getting a little more rewards than they were supposed to initially. They gained a little bit more territory on the Lost Kingdom than they were supposed to initially. And while they weren't too like 100% satisfied, they realized that the fact that they didn't go out and just civil war at mid KVK earned them the, the respect of the big alliance saying, okay, well, we see the error in our way. We see that you guys were mature enough and strong enough and respected our kingdom enough to not do this. And so we're gonna, first of all, here's some more in this KVK. And from here on out, we're gonna work it out so that we work together better. And that's what happened. A kingdom that res respects itself doesn't go into a civil war during KVK unless something really, 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 really drastic happens. And usually when they go on civil war during KVK, something drastic happens. It's either they lost the KVK and alliances start blaming each other and burn each other to death. Or it was like a, a previous confrontation that just boiled up and got destroyed after they lost their KVK or something like that. But I've never really seen a kingdom civil war it out in zone four. It was like, it is ridiculous. Like, kind of sucks. It sucks for the folks of 101 who built a kingdom or are trying to be in a kingdom that has a healthy situation in it, that the alliances work together well. I'm sure something happened there that we're not aware of, but all of this was sparked from trying to punish a player for breaking kingdom rules and an alliance backed him up. That is another small point I wanted to go over, which is at the end of the day, if you are an alliance in a kingdom, you should probably realize that one of two things are going on. Either you are part of the conversation and accept and have part in creating the kingdom's rules, or there's a much bigger alliance that sets the rules and tones, and if you wanna play, you play by the rules. You don't wanna play. Then wh why wait until a KVK, such a massive KVK, everybody knows about the Civil War. Why are you waiting for this moment to duke it out, right? It's, it sucks for everybody. It sucks for the Alliance that lost over a billion power doing this. It sucks for the folks that migrated out because of this situation. It sucks for everybody in, in 101 in that scenario. Does it affect Lost Kingdom 1 though? The answer is no. The only way this affects Lost Kingdom 1 is if the two B teams that are with 331 and 177 have such a big impact on the A teams fighting and these guys don't. Essentially, as, as messed up as it sounds, and there's an 8.2 billion power alliance and a B team, just so you understand that these B teams are no joke. But even then, the difference in magnitude and power of A teams and B teams is really, really drastic. And so the roles that the B team plays is first of all, duke each other and make sure that the B team from the other team doesn't bother the A team of your team, the A kingdom of your team. And secondly, once you, if you're a B team, once you handled your opposition's B team on that 1v1, then you come in to help your A team. The real question is whether the B teams on 341 and 177 side will be able to handle the B teams on 331 and 93 quick enough to then be able to support the A fights. In Lost Kingdom, I believe it was uh, 52 where we covered 411 uh, fighting. What 411 did is that they straight up kind of tried to take their time with the A team so they can go help their own B team duke out the other B team. And then they went after 430 who were part of the A team, right? And so it's one of those situations where 
if a B kingdom can have that big of an impact on two A kingdoms fighting it out against each other, then this can be very problematic. I don't think based on the magnitude of the A kingdoms in this KVK, I don't think it'll matter. At the worst case scenario, one of the alliances that was supposed to quad rally or triple rally will go deal, one alliance will go deal with a, with a B team while the other alliances go and take care of, of uh, the 1v1s on the A's. It's not disrespecting the B guys because they're amazing kingdoms with very much crazy power. Again, an 8.2 billion power alliance in the B kingdom, that's a lot of power. But the magnitude of power in those A teams is just so much bigger. I don't think it'll affect much at all. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. I appreciate every single one of you. Drop the like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. All that good stuff. Tomorrow we stream. Work has been destroying me. I've been late every night with videos. I apologize for that. Thank you for still sticking around with the channel and supporting this, this dream and journey of one day doing content full time. And not only Rise of Kingdoms content, we're working on getting drones. We're working on getting traveling going as soon as COVID is done. So all your support is very much appreciated. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. That fort, by the way, built, as funny as it seems, the 3.7 billion power lines managed to hold back this 8.2 billion power lines. The fortress built, but after that, I just lost interest in this because really, it sucks. Take care. Peace.